<laughs> Welcome to Hannah Berry. Hannah, Hello. how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Excellent. We're here in your studio in Brighton. Yes, yes. Um, what what things can we pick out from your studio? You've got what looks like to be a golden lobster. Uh, no, that's. Um, I mean, this this piece hanging from from the from here. Yeah. That's um, a face hugger plush. Oh, from from, from the alien, from the alien film. From the alien film. Uh, I I wore it as part of my costume when I ran in the in the heroes run five whole kilometers around dressed as Ellen Ripley with that on my on my back there. <laughs> I've, I've I've carefully I've I swear this is always out. I haven't just put it out for your benefit here, but there, there's my little medal there for <laughs> running my five kilometers. So Adam Teen is now out in all good shops. Yes, all good, all, all good shops everywhere. So you. you I, I feel like comic book artists get a better deal than um, normal novelists because you get to be in more than one type of shop. You get to be in comic That's shops. That's true. That is true. I never thought of it. Double that the way. opportunity for people yeah. to buy your things. Although never in W. H. Smiths, I don't think. Are you too? I think that's the pinnacle. I think that's when you or in in ASDA, for example, if you if you get your books in ASDA, then you know you've made it. I don't think they've. I think I think probably the their order for Adam Tyne is is lost in the post somewhere. It's probably just, it's just processing <laughs> somewhere. You know, it's on the way. So, um, what made what made you write Adam Tyne? Well, we first of all it is Adam Tyne. That's a big question. Adam Tyne, isn't it? Not Adam Teen. I can say it however because it's not it's not a real word. It's not a real word. So you can say it however however you like. Adam Tyne, you could say. Adam Tyne. Yeah. Adam Tyne. Yeah. Plus to Edam Tyne. Which is, is it always Edam Tyne? It's not not to do with cheese. It's no, just always no. Edam Tyne. <laughs> Psychological thriller. Yeah. Nothing to do with cheese. Nothing to do with cheese. A scary last last train home mm. it chilled me. Really? Yeah, I don't. It, I, there have been a couple of occasions when I've been taking the train home late at night, and I just thought, what if there is a deep dark secret that brings us all together? No, oh, you never know. You wouldn't know it. They never worked out in the book. Maybe we'll never work it out either. <laughs> have Have you Have you killed a man? I, knowingly or unknowingly, you wouldn't know. So that's... I I can definitely knowingly say I haven't. Knowingly killed a man. You know. I know. Okay. Because you'd know. You're probably safe. It, well, if it's knowingly, then. But you... the people in the book, they don't. They don't know. Largely. That's very true. Mm. And the secret that brings them all together. You'll just have to read the book to find yeah, out. Yeah, we can't. We can't disclose that now. But set, set up set up set up Adam Tyne for us. <sighs> well, um, it's it's a story about um, four people who are connected by a murder which they which they've caused but by very slight actions with very very small deeds that they've done they I think maybe they don't all know about they, know, they don't all know the way that they've that they've contributed to this they've all but they all have done um, and so the the story follows their their journey on the on the last train home and it is the last train home and um, at the same time as they are being uh, picked off by something supernatural connected to the murder? Can I say that? That sounds maybe, well, not, well, maybe picked off is a bit. I think exciting. I think as the author, you're well within your rights to um, be the lord of all spoilers. <laughs> you, you you should dictate what. what they were constitu- all dead all along. <laughs> 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 they weren't though. Oh, were they? <laughs> um, one of the things that you talk about in the blogs that you write for Book Trust is your love of the French bande dessinée. Yeah. Very much so. Um, did you used to go to France as a lot as a child? Is that how you got into them? Um, how did no. you come across Le Bon Destiné? <laughs> well, we, we kind of did because my dad's sister and, and her family moved to France when, when I was quite young. But I never, um, I mean, they lived in the middle of nowhere. There are probably no bookshops where they are. So we never, I didn't discover them until um, some years later. It was my mum. Actually, she went to, she went to um, Brussels and she brought back a little selection of, of uh, Bon Destiné. Um, which uh, just blew me away because they were they were fabulous, fabulous, beautiful things, and they were there was lots of lots of depth and lots of intrigue and lots of you know, little details and bits and pieces, which um, which caught me more than say, for example, um, Spider Man, for example. But I love Spider Man. Lots of people do. Lots of people do. He's got his own special charms. And uh, how did Les Bons Dessinés... I have to... I, I've started off saying it in the proper <laughs> French accent, so I feel like I should continue. I think, saying, I think you do, for <laughs> the continuity. <laughs> what, what, um, how did that influence your illustrating style and your storytelling? Oh, style? totally. Because, I mean, before then, the only comics that I'd seen had been really uh, very sleek and very... Um, I think mostly, mostly coloured by computer. They were all very... 
um, or if not but coloured by a computer, but with, with, with uh, very bold flat colours. And it was the first time that I'd seen a comic which, which had really in-depth painterly artwork, you know, where you could actually see, you know, brush strokes and things, which I quite like. I, I, I mean, like, um, I like artwork coloured by computer as well, don't get me wrong. But um, I, I like, you know, I like to see the, the mark of a brush every now and then, you know, is of that, an evening. Is that, what you, is that what you do? Do you do I anything? I use actual brushes. In fact, mostly this actual brush here. Wow, yeah. it's tight, teeny tiny. Yeah, well... How do you, do, do, you, do you use that for the big panels? Uh, yeah, yeah. For, for all panels, I'm just very patient. And uh, what I should get a bigger brush, really. Yeah, you probably should. About it. Probably work a lot faster if I did that. <laughs> um, and what have you been enjoying about the Book Trust Writer Residency? Joe, you know I I wasn't sure that I would because it was it, I've never really written anything non-fiction that people were going to read before now. So I've I've not. Um, I was I was afraid to be honest when I when I first started. I can say that now because I've because I've already started, and I've really I've really enjoyed the the um, the feedback that I've gotten. There's a kind of a, a little community around around book trust and people who like the the um, the librarians and the school teachers and people who really uh, are involved with book trust. And it's it's nice to it's nice to to know what they have to say and to to hear about their their thoughts and views on on things what I've written and stuff like that. And uh, one one of the the things that you come back to it uh, quite a lot in the blogs is um, the importance. Poo of... jokes, is it? Uh, I don't think apart I've... from the poo jokes, I think I write them. And you take them out when you post them up. Honestly. Yeah, well, we we operate a strict no poo policy on the Poo Chance <laughs> website. Uh, I might even have to edit out the bit where we talked about poo <laughs> really? in this video. We can we can work around that. Um, a, lo a lot of a lot of the the blogs are about the importance of reading graphic novels and hmm. um, how graphic novels quite rightfully stand alongside all the literary fiction greats like your Salman Rushdie's and your Martin Amis's. Yeah. Um, is that is that a thing that is quite close to your heart? Definitely, yeah. I mean I like to um I like to, to feel like we're we're doing good and worthy and, and grounded and interesting work and, and you know, we're pushing intellectual boundaries and visual boundaries and all kinds of boundaries. Poo jokes we're talking about now. <laughs> I mean all all kinds of things. So I like to feel that we have as much to we have as much to give as, as other people. And what do you think? People. What do you think you're able to do in a graphic novel that you might not be able to do in a novel? Um, I always think that silences work best in a graphic novel because you can, you can, you can, you can just describe them better visually somehow than you can, or, or certain certain kinds of atmosphere, especially if it's really awkward. You can describe them better with um, with visuals, I think, than with than with uh, words.